Hi everybody. It's time for another L another medical equipment teardown. We got a little x-ray machine here that needs to be taken apart. Look at that. It's a Siemens Mobilet. So you can actually go with this x-ray machine wherever you want and take uh, extra images. It's from 1980s. And I'm gonna take it apart and see what we got. And the actual x-ray tube is over there. And I think we got some capacitors inside here. So I'm gonna take those out. Interesting little thing. It weighs around 350 kilograms, so it's pretty heavy. The air fire have came off. It's supposed to be there. So yes, let's open it up. Now the front cover is off. There's some bridging between the different voltages and this has some circuits and here are the circuits look at that all nicely done and I think that's the part that actually changed the voltage depending on the input now what was that board? That's the voltage distributor. That's on the middle there. It's a rotating anode control for the X-ray head. That one. Lots of regulators and stuff on it. So AC to DC. That's a transformer coming there, of course. So the power supply regulation. That board on top with a big coil on it. And that's a filament circuit. It really controls the filament and turns it on in the X-ray head. It's a little diode. And that's a regulation transistor. Is that a transistor? Uh, yes, VDU58. That's interesting stuff. And on the back there, there's another circuit. This, uh, I think that's a charging control for the capacitors. And here you can see some capacitors. There are lots of them. So let's take this part, these things apart. And I think they get the side off first, or the top. There are actually two more transformers that we can't see here. That's the only one we can see. There's another transformer back here. I see the little screw tap on it. A bolt, nut, and here's another transformer. It's back here, and there's a nut for it. The bolt going through. And here you can see how they look like. That's that's a metal transformer that we can see. It's slightly bigger, and that's much bigger. And it's made in Sweden. Nice. Here we got all the circuitry that controls everything. Yeah, lots of chips are missing. Some programmable chips there. Let's see if we can find some dates on there. And that one is dated 84. And that's an interesting looking thing. Wonder what that is. And some larger ships. I 
analog to GD digital converter. And lots of 74 series ships. That might be some regulators from back here. Lots of wire. Oh, look at that. That's, those switches are socketed. Look at that. There's a little board on top. Lithium battery. I wonder how much that battery cost back then. Surprised that the, that isn't a nickel cadmium battery. They used lithium batteries on that day. Now the whole section is removed. There's a lot of stuff on it. And backside here, you can see the transformers. It's a big one. A slightly smaller one is the two resistors here. So fuses. It's big power resistors. That one is 27 ohms and that one is 47 ohms. This is 120 watts. Same with the other one. It's bigger sisters. And so here's the more important part. Look at that. And here we've got some capacitors. Some capacitors. Bloody ton of capacitors here. Goes all the way in there. There's another resistor here. Smells good. Smells capacitor. <laughs> okay. 37 kilojoules. There's some, uh, some more capacitors down there. And there's this SCRs. The huge SCRs under the heat sink. There's two heat sinks, the SCRs on the bottom side and on the top side. And yes, there's on our side as well. Lots of SCRs in there. See more capacitor. And yes, there's the S more SCRs there. Coils. And as you can see, I removed one section of the capacitors. And this is what they look like. That's a lot of capacitors. How many are they? 3 times 6. So 18 capacitors on one board. And there are lots of boards in here. So 15 boards in here. Yes, there are 15 boards in here. So it's 15 times 18 capacitors. I think they are connected in parallel. How many? 1150 microfarad, 360 volts. That can be a massive destruction. And here we got the SCR part out. And there's some, those are diodes. I think they are the SCRs in there. Some more diodes under here. And the SCRs are here. Those two are SCRs. Heat sinks. Now I've just turned around so you can see the so you can see the wires. Going to the trigger for the SCR. So some open inductors. And some controlling circuit of some kind of gate drive transformers. And the wires going to the X ray head. Yes, now it's empty here. Look at that. No capacitors left. Nothing. I'm just going just to to put everything together now in the bottom part, the plates. So it looks like normal. But of course, 
it will not work because it's empty. And we've got the capacitor housing. Let's screw that together again. And there are the capacitors. Look at that. Yes, I'll put this capacitor bank together again. Put back the capacitors. And now everything is together back again. Looks like everything is inside, but it's oh, it's empty. And now it's time to get into the X-ray head and see how that is, is uh, connected and stuff. So I need to disconnect the wires and take those out first. And after that, I need to take the transformer and stuff out of it. And now it's time to remove the X-ray head from the machine. We're gonna need to remove this holder kind of things. I had already cut off the wires inside here, so there, there's nothing left in this big box that's empty. The only interesting thing now is the X-ray head. And now the side cover is off, and you can see what's happening inside here. I've got that the thing here that actually releases the x-ray head so I can actually move it around a bit like this and all the thing is just going away all the screws are removed except for one let's remove those ones and this inner tube will just pop off and this will fall down soft stuff under it which don't seem to help so much as I found a little power supply to put under it I actually removed that part here as you can see it's angled right now and this is the part that held it together it's a piece of steel I think it's pretty heavy so it's not aluminium and this one is left and I need to find something else to put under it or maybe I need to center that power supply a little bit of duct tape here so I need to uh, be, uh, one of these rolls again two rolls of duct tape and we'll actually reach up to this or oh, if I found something else in here but it's pretty sensitive stuff so I can't put everything under it I have secured it with some earth wire that's important Let's see how this goes. Don't want that flying on the floor. Oh, the both are off. I removed that one as well because it's dropped a bit. And yes, alcohol solves everything. We got denitrated ethanol. A bottle of that under here and the duct tape. So I need to quickly remove this from here so it don't so not an accident happen. So it's pretty heavy. It's heavy stuff. But it's actually disconnected from these arms now. Now that extra head is away. Here it is. There it is. It was pretty heavy stuff. So this wire was very important. So it let let it lets itself go from this little grip here. And now this is pretty tight. Yes, that's hard. I need to take this away now and dismantle it. See what's inside. And use the Dremel to take the transformer out. And of course, it will be a lot of oil in it. Which is nice. I removed some stuff from the extra head before I take the Dremel and Dremel it out. And here's the actual inside it, inside of it. Yes, there's a very nicely done. Look at that. 
the transformer and the tube is inside here. And this is what actually regulates how much x-rays you want to come out. There's the one opening and there's the other one. So there's the knob, there it is. As I've got a lot of mirrors. So I've got a big image. You see, and they both are open. And that's a very thin. That's in Z axis, <laughs> X axis, I think. So I get the right. That's an X axis, that's a Y. Now just a little square in the middle. I'm gonna open this all the way up to get a line in the Y direction. And now you get a square. Now I've got the front cover away, that little plastic thing. I'm going to remove the screws here, I've already loosened these small ones. But yes, yeah, so now inside here you can see the mirror and there's a little light bulb. There's a light bulb. There's that little thing here. That was a light bulb. You see it right there, it's a little one of these halogen lamps. And now I have removed this part here. This looks pretty advanced. It actually shuts the both front and the back. So the X-ray tube is here and it's radiating through that. I need to actually pass two of these. One on the bottom here and one on the top. Very nicely done. High quality stuff. There's a wire that did go into that. And so here's the actual remaining stuff. And so look at that, there's the X-ray tube in there and there's no beryllium alloy, there's just a normal piece of glass in front of that. I don't know how fat that is, but you can see the tube inside there, the anode. I don't, I don't know how big the trans, transformer and the tube is. See, I think this thing here is some kind of lead. Let's scratch it. Yes, that's lead. Look at that. It's soft. And yes, the transformer will be inside here. I need to open the screws and drain the oil. But first I need to remove all, this, all of this electronic stuff. There's lots of connection points right here. Well, that had a lot, one, lot of connections, and there's two connections here going to the transformer. It's a very clear oil in it, and a lot. needed a lot of oil in that and there we got the nice stuff we got the tube with like the capacitor 3.5 nanofarads that's a good for a tesla coil 15 kilovolts dc and there we got the transformer and a huge core 30 kilovolts out of that no 130 kilovolts of the transformer Some 
lead around it and in there is a filament transformer and yes there's some tubes under there I think there are some kind of diodes yes there must be diodes and here we've got a lot of resistors and two spark caps and yes we've got the connections here and that's part there, that's a rotating anode motor. See the windings. There's a motor itself, a lead. And the tube is inside there. The filament and the cathode going in there. And the anode, I think it must be somewhere here. I said some kind of resistor for that. You can see it in there. It's hard to see it. I'm going to have to take it apart. And take all of these things out. It looks pretty nice. Very nicely made. And a nice capacitor. <laughs> yes, I managed to get the tube out. This is a big x ray tube. Very nice. There's a rotating anode. Yeah, that's pretty big. There's a little window here that the ox is where x-rays are flied out from and let's see a little filament in there the terminals on the back that uh, seal the vacuum pump the air out of it it's pretty big x-ray tube don't want to break it uh, how is the glass in here the glass goes a bit inside, so the oil can go inside and cool it a bit. It goes inside the almost this much. Yes, very nice X-ray tube. And now, now everything is removed. It's empty shell. Not so much stuff left in it. Now it's just time to put this thing back together again. It smells oil. I also need to put that on it first. Then put that uh, back in here. And the only problem left is that that spring-loaded thing here. It will fly up to the ceiling again, I think, because it's extremely light. That's Weighs something around uh, 30 kilos, 30 kilograms. So I think this one will be a bit annoyed about it. But I maybe can fix that with something, put something in there. I don't know. Let's try it out. Yes, now I know how to solve the weight problem for this. The problem was that it's pretty light, so I'm gonna put some rolling stones into it. Here we've got some rolling stones and I put them in here side here. Let's see if it can help, help that. It will compensate for the oil and for the transformer because those things were the heaviest things in this. 20 liters of oil, that's a lot. There were 20 liters of oil inside that and a huge transformer. So I put these rolling stones into it, maybe another one. Five rolling stones and put it back together. And now that part is in place, I just need to put the stones in it and yes, there's some oil in it still, so when I put the stones in, I need to put some towels in there as well because I don't want enough of that oil pouring around this. We're going to use this x-ray machine as a museum part just because it's so nice. I'm going to show you how it will look like. And yes, there's still some oil left in that expansion. So I don't want that pouring anywhere. And there's a little bit of oil right there. So I need to remove that. I heard it accidentally spilled some of it on the floor. So yeah, oh yeah. put the stones in and take away that little bit of oil and screw everything back together. And now the tissues. Towels are inside, 
uh, the stones. So I just need to put that black one there. And I think this will work. Otherwise, there'll be a hole in the ceiling. <laughs> and now it's back together again at last. It was pretty annoying to get it together, that part on the front here. And that's heavy, and this actually works. Look at that. Don't need the air fryer anymore. And let's put back this wire. Maybe I can use it for something. A lot of oil. And there's a part from it. There's the tube. That's a capacitor. And that's for the motor. Or a stator. The rotor is inside here. And yes, lots of nice stuff. And yes, that was a teardown of the Samsung Siemens, not Samsung. Siemens Mobilet X-ray machine. Thanks for watching.